Hi everyone, I'm Rupert Goff and today we're talking about flatmates and boarders. We're going to look into how the banks treat them on your application and what you can do to maximize the benefit they provide to your mortgage application. But before we start, if you get even the smallest amount of benefit out of this video, click the like button and then the subscribe button to tell our YouTube overlords that our video is worth watching. I also want you to comment below with your worst flatmate experience that you have ever had what did they do that would qualify them for the worst flatmate of all time award? For now, let's get into it. All right, flatmates. For those of you that have survived that period of your life that required often complete strangers living and doing whatever it is that strange flatmates do. Ah, come on, we're all just trying to have a good time. And the room next to you, well done. But first home buyers will often turn to renting out spare rooms to flatmates and boarders to help pay their mortgage. Firstly, let's clarify the difference between a boarder and a flatmate because it's important for your application. A flatmate is someone who rents a room at a fixed price and shares the costs such as food with others in the house. A boarder, on the other hand, pays a set amount which might include the room, prepared meals and laundry, etc. This would be the typical arrangement for an international student living in a home. Because of these extra benefits, boarder income would usually be higher than flatmate income, but the bank must calculate some additional costs incurred from this type of income. It would be reasonable to expect a family's food bill to be higher, for example, as there's now an extra, usually adult, mouth to feed. From a lending perspective, both forms of income are completely acceptable to the bank. However, flatmate income is a little easier to calculate due to the additional costs of having a border. For the rest of this video, we'll mainly be referring to flatmate income and the policies around that. The policy for including flatmate income in mortgage applications changes as banks welcome or shy away from higher risk lending. As a general rule, banks don't like applications to rely on flatmate income if the mortgage is over 80%. So those with what the bank class as a small deposit, being under a 20% deposit, generally need to be able to afford the mortgage on their own income. This is frustrating because the people that generally make use of flatmate income are those first home buyers who are paying a large mortgage early in their career. These are the buyers that in general don't have a 20% deposit. But the banks have made the decision to only rely on buyer income for low deposit buying for a reason. They want to know that if for some reason something happens in the rental market that means you can't get a flatmate for a long time, that you can survive on just your income. It's annoying and counterintuitive, but low deposit borrowers represent a higher risk for banks, so they need to put a bit of a higher threshold on them. Bear in mind though, we are just talking about not being able to use flatmate income to support your mortgage application. In reality, you can, of course, get a flatmate in whenever you like, and we highly recommend doing so if you can manage it. Let's say your income covers the actual mortgage payments and the flatmate income is put towards making extra payments on your mortgage. A quick back of the envelope calculation tells us that on a 30 year mortgage, each additional dollar saves you $5 of interest over the life of your mortgage. This is based on some assumed future interest rates, but is a good rough estimation. That means every $200 you pay off from your mortgage saves you around $1,000 of interest. Just having a flatmate for the first two years of your mortgage could mean saving you $100,000 over the life of your mortgage. That might even make those painful flatmates worthwhile. Hey roomies! Hey. <laughs> Maybe. If you do have 20% deposit, then things get significantly better with a flatmate income. Banks will generally take $150 to $200 of flatmate income and often allow you up to two flatmates. This means between another $7,500 to $15,000 of additional income, which can allow you to borrow approximately an additional $80,000 to $160,000 on your mortgage. While this may not be enough for an additional room in your house, it may get you a higher quality house or allow you to purchase in a better neighborhood. One thing I will say about applying for a mortgage with flatmate income is to be prepared to prove you are going to get a flatmate in, or even better, have a flatmate lined up to move in, and try your best to have them move in once you've actually purchased their property. Flatmates do sometimes change their mind about moving in with you, but saying you're going to get a flatmate without any intention of actually doing so 
is very close to submitting a fraudulent application to the bank. Along those lines, you will need to have enough bedrooms in the property you purchase to host a flatmate. If you're a couple with a child, then a two bedroom house will not allow a flatmate to move in. Finally, some of you will have noticed that the maximum a bank will allow you to use for flatmate income being between $150 and $200 per week is laughably low compared to actual prices today. Even in the most affordable of cities, $150 for a room is cheap. However, the bank has no control over the size of the room you're renting or the expected vacancy from your flatmates. For this reason, they are effectively taking the worst case scenario for all houses. In other words, you could rent pretty much any musty old converted garden shed for $150 per week, so that is what they are taking as expected income. Frustrating for those that can easily get double that for a room, but part of the bank's worst case scenario modeling that they use for mortgage applications. So that's it, let me know your worst flatmate experience below in the comments and some red flags that first home buyers can look for when interviewing their next flatmate. I'm Rupert Goff, thank you for watching.